this guy for uh, dangerous driving. I'll get the screenshot of this and, uh, and send it over to the police. Anyways, we're on our way. Because of that, the incorrect term of VLC in terms of CBD. So typically, if you're doing the proper chemistry, if you're doing the proper science, you use the, vari the variation in the protein that would determine the the, the, the name of the variant. In other words, you go in, you do the nomenclature uh, within uh, organic chemistry. That's where, that's where, uh, uh, when you look at the variants for the flu, 
influenza, which is the virus itself, the variants, all the variants of the flu, like the H1N1, the H2N1, there's a whole series of variants, um, is based on the protein. So you would give the variation of the protein. Uh, that's not being done for a CBD. So the, a large chunk of the work is not qualified, it's not actually scientific, it's simply opinion, as political opinion. So, uh, you've got a lot of bad science going on. I haven't listened to Lionel today, but Lionel was back on the back. I listened to him yesterday. I've got two ways of listening to him. While I'm doing other things. I don't have time to log in and listen to them every single day, but I do put them in a little bit of test here and there. He explains by trying to give analogy examples. But a lot of times you can't do that and he fails at it. But yeah, of course, yeah, he's reading from his notes, he's not giving you position that he does on his uh, finalmedia.com but uh, you can gain from his notes you can gain from his notes exactly where he is and he still this is the, we're at the period of time where uh, things are kind of ambiguous uh, fundamental direction as where people are actually going. And so, there's a lot of confusion out there. I see what's happening now. The confusion is turning into paranoia. And that itself is a psychosis. And a psychosis is fundamentally a, uh, an illness of the soul. A malaise of the soul. Because psychology and the, the, the psych part, or the properly psyche, that's the word for soul. Uh, psychology is psyche or loyi. That means study of the soul. And so therefore, uh, we are talking about spiritual things. And this is how Gnosis melds back into science once again uh, uh, through metaphysics. Because there are mechanisms which we can talk about, which we can observe. Uh, And find out what what behaves in what manner in terms of the overall nature of the soul. So you're talking about this is where word studies come into an in, in, in interesting uh, an interesting line. The term feces is used in English for poop. We use the term, we harden the sea, call it physics, in English for the word nature. Now the thing is, in Greek they don't do that, they take the soft part of the sea, so it becomes feces. So physics in Greek is feces, even though the word physics itself is a Greek word. We've just all put the phonetic pronunciation. Now here's uh, an interesting thing. Feces in many ways is also our nature. It's our nature, specific to us. Or any animal that uh, produces such matter.
So, in Greek, it would be uh, the turn to study of the soul. That would be the part of meta pieces. Or metaphysics. So there's a study of the beyond, and the soul is beyond. It's beyond nature. But it does have a nature. So you'd be part of it, you'd be studying metaphysics. In this case, you leave out the term psyche because uh, the meta means means beyond the physical matter. But you specifically talk about the spiritual matter, the spiritual universe, and that's where you'd be talking. You'd be getting using the term uh, feces rather than psyche because it's already within the understandings of the term. Conversation, another level of conversation that we're coming into, uh, into scope or into focus. Online, I believe, is a very, very light. He could be talking about it, but he says he's worried too much about uh, censorship from uh, YouTube. Well, the thing is, I haven't really had much of an issue. There's always ways around the shadow band. <coughs> so I forgot to check the day, the date, I should say. But I'm pretty sure it's the 17th of June. And I know it's about, uh, well, between quarter past 10 and 10.30 in the evening. Seek myself a little bit. Interesting night. Uh, found new ways to get more work in, be more efficient with my time. And that was, uh, while I was doing something else and doing some other writing, uh, I was doing some editing, uh, there's a, there are times when the video has to render about a half hour, 45 minutes, uh, for everything to get done. And, uh, so I watched, uh, uh, Lionel. And I said, Lionel is a, beyond the personality, although we are talking about the personality, we're comparing him with, with intellectuals. Uh, and then he is one, but we, we, that means we can compare him with uh, people like Voltaire and get a sense of who Voltaire was as a person. How do you place the person who that Voltaire was? And this is how you begin to understand history 
not through the eyes of simple statistics of what happened when, but rather why things happened, the reason behind events within history or in even people who have heavily influenced this. So this is why we compared Lionel LeBron to uh, uh, Lionel Nation to uh, basically Voltaire. There is a comparison nuggets of information that he passes along that are that that, are, that is significant because they are significant there's more than one so he'll give you a sense for how people are feeling within a society and he's talking about John Stewart and talking about well he calls him a hack and everything that goes goes on as a work and so on and so forth but the thing is uh, a lot of he a lot of, a lot of what he's doing is the same thing uh, it's just in a different direction for different reasons everyone on radio has their own thing it's about making themselves popular and sometimes they'll bend the truth what they call bending the truth uh, to fit themselves into a niche or to a status that maybe they wouldn't ordinarily uh, have if they had simply come out and told the truth to begin with. So they will act, they will develop, well, going back to our, our TV shows, they'll develop a pretense. and a sense of propriety around that pretense. Now the pretense isn't anything real. Thank you. Uh, about 1,500 Canadian. About 1,500 including tax and shipping. Yeah. Thank you. Of course, I gotta adjust the camera as we're going. I should have done that at the stoplight, but I didn't pay attention to this. Uh, so that's as we think about it, that the pretense is used to create a sense of propriety, and that when the when in the sense of pretense, the proprietary is gone outside of a behavior of shock and uh, awe and awe occurs at the suggestion that he is anything but honest. <laughs> and so this is this is sort of this is sort of the reality of the situation. And it's not that everybody's on the same page. It's that, that what happens is this is was coined by KGB agents. These people who are like this become in a sense the useful idiots. To a particular goal, and I think that there there are socialism. I mean, Stalin certainly considered himself to be a Marxist. So did Lenin. So did Trotsky. Uh, the KGB officer, uh, who has produced an enormous amount of information, uh, this was in 1985, certainly considered himself to be a communist. So the turn is, oh, there's no such thing. Well, there are. It doesn't matter if he has friends who aren't exactly like this. What happens is that. The beliefs amongst the Marxists, the, com the communists, the socialists, are all varied. In, you know, again, as, before, as I said before, when you say a person is Christian, do they all believe the exact same thing about Christ? No. But that's why you have all these different denominations. You go the same thing with Muslims. They're not all one Muslim thing. But there's a whole variety of same thing with the Jews. There's not one Jewish group. There's a thousand of them, or more. So what happens is you, you, you know, yes, you're using the term communist. You 
do it in a very generalized manner to understand that there is more to the term in terms of defining it uh, than the initial discussion. This is the same thing with the term pedophilia. But he takes this in a legal sense and into the courtroom where you where you split hairs over fine definitions like coming up with the, with, with a definition this is the Clinton thing what exactly is the definition of is yeah, yeah the word is well what's its definition what's the, you know, it all depends on what the, what the definition of is is that's Clinton saying And lawyers will quibble over these minutia, overlooking the overall reality of the case that they're dealing with. And it's done simply out of pretext to demonstrate their status as intellectuals. It is not, although it should be, to get to the truth of what actually occurred and have some form of resolution for both the victim and the perpetrator. Because if it's about reform and correction, then the person who has the issue of violence or the issue of the behavioral issue should have a chance to repair his, his situation. But that's not always the case. They may not always have the chance. And typically, the way the prisons are set up, which are based, are based on crime and punishment, this is an interesting book by uh, Dostoevsky, but it actually comes out of the Roman Catholic sense of the term penitent, that you have to pay for your crimes. That there is a, a state-measured uh, retribution for the things you've done. Again, they, again these, this is this, is, this, this history, of crime and punishment, which just gives me word about, and in many ways becomes a primer for what's going on today. But I know a lot of people aren't so good at reading, and uh, Lionel LeBron never mentions it. But the thing is that, that communism and socialism have a long history, and become not simply a singularly defined word that becomes the spectrum. So when you're talking about communism, you're talking about the spectrum of communism.